silver has to have a weak dollar in order to flourish. And, and so with the dollar right now at 22 year highs, that reminds me a lot of 2001 before silver went on this tear from uh, $4 to 49 in 11 years. What's up, YouTube? Silver Dragons here. Today, I am joined by Lior Gantz, the founder of WealthResearchGroup.com. Lior, we're going to get right into this two-part question. Number one, are we in a recession? Number two, if we are in a recession, why is the Fed not acting like we are? So technically, uh, for the classic definition of, of, a, uh, of a recession, of course, there's no denying there are two consecutive back-to-back uh, contracting GDP uh, quarters. So in, in terms of that, yes, we are in a recession. The The problem with that is that the technicality of it, um, it is comprised in such a way that because we shut down the entire global economy in 2020 and then had the, the fastest growing economy in, in 60 years in 2021 because we're comparing year to year, then of course 2022 was likely to be uh, a, a technical recession. But if you look at how you would describe a recession apart from two consecutive back-to-back uh, -to -back con uh, contracting GDP quarters, there are many things that don't line up with a classical recession. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we're not slowing, that the economy isn't slowing down. I'm not saying that we're not seeing inflation. I'm not saying all that. I'm saying this is not a classical recession. This is a reset of the global economy in many regards. And of course, it means that we're contracting in terms of uh, GDP numbers. And I think that that will continue um, for a while longer. So they should not act as if we're in a classical recession because we don't have double digit uh, um, unemployment numbers. We're not at 15%. We're not seeing structural problems with uh, the real estate market or the banking sector or, or whatever else. We're seeing a reset. And what does that mean? Um, for 14 years, from 2008 until today, central banks were under the premise of we want to get to 2% healthy, quote unquote, inflation. And they could not do it. They, they had 1.4, 1.3, 1.5, 1.6, 1.8 when it got overheated on the CPI, I'm talking. And, but they couldn't get to two. For 14 years, they kept rates at zero. They were very accommodative, and yet they couldn't get to that 2% CPI. Now, what happened is from a, a, uh, a, um, a storm, of many circumstances, both unprecedented and uh, miscalculated, we all this pent up inflation potential that was created during the ZERP, uh, 14 years of ZERP, of zero interest rate policies, and all this accommodative um, environment, it, it unleashed. And one moment, it was out. Then you started having four, five, six, eight, nine point three percent uh, uh, CPI numbers, and they realized that it it came out all in one pop, and now they're trying to course correct. But we are in a reset in terms of this is the end of ZERP. Well, Lior, let me ask you this. I know a lot of people expect the Fed to pivot dramatically, go back to zero interest rates, stimulus, all that stuff. Are we going to see that happen? We are not going back to zero interest rates uh, during this decade. We Definitely not doing that. Th that's not happening. Um, and, and I want to talk more about why, because it's very important. If people really understand that there, there will be no zero interest rates, in America during this decade, they will think differently. Um, and in fact, all of this insights and analysis and the research behind it, if you go to wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash ZERP, which is Z-I-R-P, you can download the full report on why this is happening. But to kind of set your expectations here, once the Fed 
in, in about two weeks, uh, if, if you're listening to this around the time it's recorded, once the Fed uh, raises interest rates by another 75 basis points, most likely uh, in mid-September, you will get to 3% on the Fed funds rate, which is uh, way above neutral, right? The neutral is 2%. And what they're trying to impress on the markets in advance is that there is no Fed pivot or a Fed put, which is this imaginary line in the sand when the markets get to such a point that there's a lot of pain for investors and the Fed kind of eases the uh, uh, the squeeze, eases the tightening. That's not happening. It's the most unpopular thing that they can do because they're being blamed for inflation. So the last thing that they're going to do is create the environment where inflation can last. So what I think they will do is they will raise by 75 basis points, uh, uh, in my opinion, but they can do 50 and get to about 275 to, to three points, uh, to three percent and keep raising incrementally until they reach such a point where it's very visible that the CPI numbers are coming down. And we are, we are getting to that point where, um, Raising interest rates by that much is really freezing the real estate market, which is the most important uh, industry in America. And that's when I think that they will start to plateau interest rates and just leave them there for a while. Create a new baseline, a new norm for interest rates, which are not going to be zero. They're going to be somewhere there between the three and four percent. And they're just going to leave it there. They're not going to they're not going to squeeze more and they're not going to ease and they're going to wait there for a while and, and 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 be very sure that inflation is uh stabilizing and coming down throughout this decade they will keep pursuing that two percent goal just like they were uh, in the previous decade and throughout this decade they will fall short in in my opinion uh, the way that we're going to see what we're going to see this decade, we're going to see CPI numbers between the two and a half and four percent throughout the decade. There are many inflationary forces at play. And that's why I'm saying this is way more of a reset. This is much more of a, you know, let's clean the slate. Whatever what worked uh, in the previous decade has nothing to do with what's going to happen this decade. And we're resetting. To this new level now one thing i wanted to bring up you mentioned the fed raising rates to about three or four percent but if we look at the real inflation numbers you know we're at 16 percent or higher shouldn't the fed have to raise rates to that number before they actually bring inflation down the answer is that they don't have to if if they want to treat this problem overnight okay overnight and tomorrow you fix that problem, but you create many other problems. You can do that. Doing what you're suggesting, which is raising interest rates to 10 or, or 12%, that's going to create massive unemployment. On the flip side, a real estate crash, a market crash. So there, there's a trade off here. Um, okay. So that's, that's one thing. I don't think that they're there in their mindset. Um, and, and, some of this, the free markets just fix, okay? More supply of oil, uh, um, people going back to work. All, the free markets fix themselves. Um, it just takes a while longer, especially when you need to basically reinvent the entire supply chain of energy in Europe. The Fed knows how they, um, how they used to uh, measure inflation in the 70s. It's not like John Williams is the only uh economists in the world that understands shadow stats they they understand shadow stats they know the whole thing they, they have the entire picture they know exactly what's going on and what they're choosing to do is they need to find a solution that works for 330 million americans the the, the reset the bubble will burst slowly 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 so that we can reset this thing all right, so if we could actually pivot, no pun intended, over to precious metals, you know, if the Fed is not going to go to quantitative easing this decade, if rates are going to go to 4% and essentially stay there, how will this affect gold and silver, which typically perform well during quantitative easing? Are we going to see relatively low prices or what's going to happen? 
Uh, on the contrary. So right now is the worst for precious metals because um, why would you own if you're, uh, you know, institutional money, not retail money? Retail money does what it does. Uh, you can always see that on the discrepancy between physical prices and, and you know, the COMEX or, or, or the financial markets. The, when there's a big discrepancy, you know that Wall Street doesn't think like Main Street. But what you're talking about is how does the, the paper markets go up? What influences silver and, and gold prices to go gold above 2000 and silver back above uh, the 30s? So right now is the worst because you're raising interest rates, you're raising interest rates, you're squeezing out um, investors that were long the stock market and that were long real estate. And now they need to um, sell in order to fund their lifestyle or to fund uh, liquidity uh, purposes, etc. That's the worst time uh, for Wall Street uh, to own precious metals. The, the, you don't know when the Fed will stop. And all of a sudden, bonds are paying uh, way above the 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 you know what what you were accustomed to in the last ten years. I'll give you a perfect example. My hedge fund manager calls me a few days ago and says, "Lear, you know what? I can buy stocks of American Airlines right now, or I can lend American Airlines money. Their bond coupon is paying twelve percent, twelve percent interest rate." So all of a sudden he's saying, look, Tina is dead. Like there is no alternative is dead. Now I can choose. Do I want to buy stocks or do I want to own a bond? And I'll get real returns above inflation um, or the way that Wall Street measures inflation, right? The CPI. So that's the worst time for precious metals. But once the Fed starts to signal that they have stopped or that they're going to stop, then there is all of a sudden, a realization of where real interest rates are, right? Because if the Fed raises rates by, let's say, to 4%, which is where I think they'll they'll probably, um, you know, cap it off, the 10-year bond will probably pay 5%, and inflation, like you said, is still above 5%. That means that even after the most aggressive Fed policy in uh, 42 years, you're still, in real terms, in negative interest rates. And that's when uh, gold and silver are going to have a phenomenal opportunity ahead of themselves. Uh, you know, right now for silver, it's even worse because gold tends to rally with the dollar uh, many times. Um, we saw that in 2018. We saw it in, in, in many other uh, years where the dollar is strong and, and gold is strong. Silver has to have a weak dollar in order to flourish. And, and so with the dollar right now at 22 year highs, that reminds me a lot of 2001 before silver went on this tear from uh, $4 to 49 in 11 years. And that's where I think we are. We're resetting. We're getting to this point where uh, it's going to be realized by the markets that no matter how aggressive the Fed was, there is inherent inflation in the economy for the foreseeable future, for the next three, four, five, six, seven years. Therefore, commodity prices are going to remain high, especially oil. And oil is the most important uh, commodity to track if you want to track silver prices. When oil prices are higher, that really helps um, silver prices to go higher. So strong dollar, the worst. When, when the dollar starts to weaken, that's when you'll start seeing um, good prices for silver, way higher prices for silver. I think, um, you know, if you're if you're thinking about this, there are two hats you can take. One hat you can wear is if you want to have more physical ounces, this is a great time. The second hat is if you want to exit your position or uh, go long mining stocks, this is right now is way more of a, uh, I, I will buy and be very patient with, what I'm doing. I, I will nibble at this. I will slowly come in. I will dollar cost average. Whereas on the flip side, if you're accumulating physical, obviously right now is a phenomenal time to accelerate because silver is under 20. So uh, uh, gold is about to hit the 1600s again. So different two hats. Um, one is the accumulator. One is the trader. And they should be thinking differently right now. 
So as far as precious metals prices in general, I mean, are we still in a super cycle? Is this going to be just an absolutely insane decade or is it going to be a little bit more mellow? I mean, are we still in the super cycle or not? Um, nothing has changed in my opinion that, uh, that we're out of the super cycle. There are so many things in favor of gold and silver long term once this reset is, is done. Because if you think about it, <clears throat> the entire global energy uh, supply chain is is going to be uh, it's basically erased. It's no longer valid. You need to create new ways for every country it needs new ways to get reliable oil and natural gas. Every country needs dependable sources of gold, silver uranium etc lithium the whole shebang we are deglobalizing and the lack of trust between the eastern bloc and the western bloc is growing and that means that we're no longer in what's called efficient capitalism where you just go for the cheapest um uh way to get something right because the cheapest way to get something is not to drill in america it's probably to drill in uh, in other countries and source it from there but there now there's a premium. Now there's a trust premium. Can I trust this country when push comes to shove? Will they sell to me and not to China? Will they sell to me and not to India when they need to? And that's why uh, energy prices are going to go higher and commodity prices are also going to go higher because you need to find new sources for them. That is a very capital intensive um, venture. So that's one thing. Second, secondly, you have ESG and compliance. That's making mining and commodities in general way more expensive to come out of the ground. So that's second. Third, you have this entire millennial generation that hasn't really started to spend big. Spend big meaning that they're going to buy homes. They're going to buy everything they need for their families, for their children. They're going to start going on vacations. They, they will start buying uh, cars. And everything else, they are, they have not gone through their 1980s moment, um, so the same as the baby boomers have. And that is inflationary. Um, and, and fourth, if you're looking for like, what is the other reason that there's so much inflation, uh, th that's coming steadily? So three, four, five percent. That's very high inflation in America, uh, for an entire decade. Well, you need to also think about the velocity of money. The velocity of money has been really slow, like the slowest since the 1930s throughout the past two years. There, uh, If we resume the average for money velocity, then the CPI numbers are gonna stay within that four or 5% for an entire decade. And that is a huge, huge loss of purchasing power in real terms. That means literally, the dollar will be worth about um, two thirds of what it is today. And that means that gold and silver have a huge room in the portfolio of uh, both the institutional and the retail investor. But right now, this is not normal times. The, the major trends of this uh, uh, decade have not uh, been exposed, right? You're still in that reset moment this is very much like 2009 to 2011 when it, it's all a big mess and we don't know what's going to happen in 2011 the sky cleared and we realized we are fighting deflation and that's when you saw tech and growth stocks just go on a tear for for an entire decade we have still not uh, cleared our way there are many people that think that the fed will win that, and that it will crush inflation for real what i'm saying is it's going to try to do that, and it's going to do whatever it can, but it is not strong enough to really beat, and it never was strong enough to really beat the major trends that we have entered, and they are inflationary. So I think that that is, is um, uh, very important. I also want to point out just one last thing. I say that in, in almost every interview I do right now. If you don't know uh, if the word Malacca doesn't mean anything to you, Please make sure you realize um, what that is and you study that. And you know, you uh, you know the, the best way I know uh, 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 how to do that. Please go to wealthresearchgroup.com for slash Taiwan. You have to know, uh, you know, the situation about Taiwan. Everybody knows, but uh, Malacca 
is a crucial point in that South uh, China Sea that you have to know because that could be ground zero for the conflict between China and the U.S. And obviously, um, that is the other big thing that um, that will influence this entire decade. All right. Well, I have to say thank you so much, Lior, for joining me. Really appreciate all the insight, and we look forward to talking with you again next time. Thank you, sir. And lastly, I want to say a massive thank you so much to all of you for watching my video, and I will see you in my next one. Silver Dragons, out.